grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our service. And as you can see, I'm in front of Mount Calvary this morning. What a beautiful spot and a beautiful day to welcome you into worship. May the Lord bless you as you listen to the service this morning and may you be touched by the words, whether it's through the song or through the scripture. I do have an important announcement to give you. There's going to be a service here at Mount Calvary on July the 12th. It's going to be an outdoor service. So uh, you come in your cars. It's been all arranged by the faithful people here. And if it's rain, it's going to be on July the 19th. You're all welcome, whoever can come. They would love to have you, and I would love to be able to meet you through your car. Good morning, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Lynn Slack, and I am a member at St. John's Lutheran in Mahome Bay. Um, I come to you this morning representing the congregational councils of both St. John's and Mount Calvary as we wanted to give you a bit of an update in regards to our process in regards to calling our new pastor. Um, so the call committee was formed shortly after Pastor Adam left to find a replacement pastor. And we know Pastor Adam indeed is irreplaceable. So I like to say that we are searching for a new pastor for our congregations. The call committee has met several times. Most recently, we've completed two interviews um, for two potential candidates to fill the position of our pastor. We will be meeting again early in the week to review the results of those interviews. And hopefully at that point in time, we will be in the position to um, potentially recommend um, one of these individuals for a possible call to St. John's. St. John's does hold the call. However, we are very pleased to have representation from Mount Calvary on our call committee. So um, rest assured that your voice is being heard from Mount Calvary as well. We will update you as we have more news to share and we will sort out what it looks like to be able to present this candidate um, as a potential for our pastor. Also, we wanted to give you a brief update in regards to the situation of reopening the churches um, because of COVID. Um, as you know, obviously we've been shut down for the past several months and the Bishop at this point in time is still strongly recommending that we not gather in our buildings um, for worship together until at least September. The Bishop's office is working at um, putting together recommendations for us in terms of what rules we need to adhere to in order to open our doors and be safe um, for everybody that enters. So we are working at that. Uh, stay tuned for updates in regards to that. We're hoping to get the documents and information from Synod office within the week or so. So we just wanted to let you know that we are here and we're still working hard and uh, we're hopeful that we can complete this call process um, very quickly. So I hope everyone has a great day and God bless. Thank you. Let us pray. Steadfast God, you greet us as a loving parent and patiently love us beyond all measure. Great is your faithfulness. May we offer that same kindness to all whom we encounter knowing it is Christ whom we greet as we welcome others. Amen. Our gathering hymn this morning is baptized and set free in your Lutheran worship 453.
us gather our hearts and minds for the proclamation of God's holy word. A reading from Romans. Therefore, do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies, to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instrument of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been free from sin and slaved to God, the advantages you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the Gospel of St. Matthew. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to the one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. What do you make of this week's gospel passage? I'm going to read it again to you, but I'm going to read it from the Bible, the message. And this is what it says. We are intimately linked in this harvest work. Anyone who accepts what you do accepts me, the one who sent me. Anyone who accepts what I do accepts my Father who sent me. Accepting a messenger of God is as good as being God's messenger. Accepting someone help is as good as giving someone help. This is a large work I have called you into, but do not be overwhelmed by it. It's best to start small. Give a cool cup of water to someone who is thirsty, for instance. The smallest act of giving or receiving makes you a true apprentice. You won't lose out on a thing. Does it kind of look like a description for discipleship? The ups and the downs and the joys and the gifts? But maybe it is a little bit more than that, though. I think Jesus is also talking about how the disciples, you and I as disciples, are drawn into relationship with God through our testimony, our struggles, our acts of mercy that we perform. In rereading the passage, though, a few times this past week, there was a brief line that really, really stood out for me, and it says, and whoever gives even a cup of cold water to the one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. 
What a little thing to give a cup of cold water. Jesus emphasizes the same by his use of the word even. We often imagine discipleship as requiring huge sacrifices or entailing great feasts, and sometimes, yes, it is that. But other times, Jesus seems to say, it's nothing more than giving a cup of cold water to one in need, offering a hug to someone who is grieving or feeling down. Though it's kind of hard to do this at this time of pandemic where we're not allowed to hug or we're not to shake hands. Maybe it's giving a listening ear to someone in need or a friend, offering someone a ride who doesn't have a car, volunteering at the food bank, or at this time of pandemic, picking groceries up for someone, picking up their medications, delivering readings and reflections to someone who doesn't have the internet. See what I mean? Small things, a cup of cold water. Discipleship doesn't have to be heroic. All the small acts of devotion, tenderness, and forgiveness that go largely unnoticed, but look after the relationships that are most important to each and every one of us. The life of faith is composed of a thousand small gestures. Remember though, according to Jesus, there is no small gesture, no small deed. Anything done in faith and love has enormous significance for the ones involved and indeed for the world God loves so much. You know the story about the star thrower. Remember he's walking the beach and there's all these starfish on there and he's throwing them out into the ocean and someone comes and says why bother look how many starfish there is but he said for the one that i throw into the water it makes a difference jesus has promised to come in time to redeem all in love to fix all damage heal all hurts and wipe the tears from every eye. We can, in the meantime, devote ourselves to the acts of mercy and deeds of compassion, small and large. Not trying to save the world, Jesus has promised to do that, but simply trying to care for the little corner of the world in which each one of us have been placed. So even a cup of cold water can make a huge and unexpected difference to those to whom it is given. And according to Jesus, such acts has eternal and vast consequences. Can you imagine that? Or have you even thought about it in that way? Each and every act of mercy rings through the years and across the universe filled with Christ's love for the world. A love we can share anytime and anywhere with gestures that may seem small in the eyes of the world, but loom large in the life of those who receive it. Are you not doing that already? In countless and enormous ways, making this world God loves so much a little better, a little more trustworthy, a little more joyful through your gestures of love, mercy, and compassion. There is no small gesture, my friends. Through your cups of cold water, which is hugs, helping hands, listening, smiles, you're caring for the world God loves so much. Thank you for doing this. I have heard countless stories over the years, and almost every one of them, there is mention of recognizing efforts and thanking people for their labors, and what a difference it has made in their life. My friends, I don't really know you. As your interim priest, I have just joined you and there has been no witness to your many acts of mercy and grace. Yet, I know, and I do not need to be told, you have passed around the cups of cold water. Thank God for your ministry. Thank you for your smallest acts of compassion. Because of this, 
you make the world a better place and gladden the heart of God. Thank you for your good work. We need you. You are God's disciples doing God's work. I am so grateful for your commitment to do that with clarity, boldness, and grace. I thank God for you. Amen. At this time, our hymn from your Lutheran worship is 641. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of compassion, encourage our relationship with our siblings in Christ. Bless our conversations, shape our shared future, and give us hearts eager to join in a festal shout of praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of abundance, you make your creation thrive and grow to provide all that we need. Inspire us to care for our environment and to be attuned to where the earth is crying out. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, your grace is poured out for all. Inspire authorities, judges, and politicians to act with compassion. Teach us to overcome fear with hope, meet hate with love, and welcome one another as we would welcome you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of care, accompany all who are in deepest need. Comfort those who are sick, lonely, or abandoned. Strengthen those who are in prison or awaiting trial. Renew the spirits of all who call upon you. We especially pray this morning for all those whose names are on our prayer lists and whose needs are known only to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of community, we give thanks for this congregation. Give us passion to embrace your mission and the vision to recognize where you are leading us. Teach us how to live more faithfully with each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our bishops, Michael and Susan, their assistants, and Pastor Kimber, our dean, for the joy we experience in our shared ministry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, you gather in your embrace all who have died. Keep us steadfast in our faith and renew our trust in your promise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed week, everybody, and may the Christ who walks on wounded feet walk with you on the road. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands stretch out your hands to serve. May the Christ who loves with a wounded heart open your hearts to love. And may you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet. And may everyone you meet see the face of Christ in you. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah!